welcome friends now we are going to start with the previous year gate questions so let us start with the one more question so now question number one the penetration is increased by the penetration is increased by see listen carefully i am not going to write the entire question just listen the penetration is increased by number option number 1 increasing the welding current and welding speed so this is what given penetration increased by increased by so this is question number 1 so option a increasing the welding current and increasing the welding speed option b increasing the current and decreasing the speed of welding option c decreasing the welding current and decreasing the welding speed and option d decreasing the current and increasing the welding speed so we have learned in the art welding that if you want to have the maximum penetration then the current conditions should get increased and to keep the arc at a single position or particular point uh, for more amount of time to get that penetration you should minimize the welding speed so the correct option is what you should increase the current and decrease the welding speed that is a correct thing so next question is that for gas welding a particular job using neutral oxyacetylene flame the acetylene consumption was 10 liters the oxygen consumption from the cylinder in liters will be so what is given gas welding is given and gas welding what they are using they are using the neutral flame and they are saying that the acetylene consumption from the acetylene cylinder was 10 liters then how much the consumption of the oxygen from the oxygen cylinder so in neutral flame you know that what is this ratio o2 as to c2h2 it is 1 as to 1 so definitely jitna acetylene hai utna hi kya lagega wahan pe oxygen lagega okay so options are 5 liter 10 liter 15 liter and 20 liter so of course 10 liter agar acetylene liya hai then definitely oxygen also will required 10 liters okay so 10 liter is correct answer next for resistance pot welding of 1.5 mm thick steel sheets the current required is of the order i already uh, mentioned this during this resistance welding this is the standard uh, type question so for 1.5 mm thick steel sheet we are requiring the current around 10000 amperes okay and actual range of this uh, current conditions in this resistance welding is very high say we are taking standard range from 9000 to 12000 amperes no doubt it is going up to 40 50000 amperes but this is the standard range from 9000 ampere to 12000 ampere so for 1.5 mm uh, steel sheet it is uh, 10000 it is in the option 10000 ampere is the correct answer so 10 ampere 100 ampere 1000 ampere and 10000 ampere so basic thing we know that resistance welding is low voltage and very high current requiring operation isn't it so 10000 is the correct answer so next question in dc welding let us discuss here what is given in dc welding the straight polarity results in the straight polarity results in okay so options are lower penetration definitely it is wrong because direct current electro negative that is straight polarity in straight polarity what is happening 
we know already if this is the power source so this is the electrode and this is the work we discuss already so electrode negative here it is given that is straight polarity and work is positive so definitely flow of electrons from where to where from cathode to anode this is the work is anode and electrode is cathode so we already discussed the features of this direct current straight polarity direct current reverse polarity uh, in the videos okay so option b is what lower deposition rate it is seems to be okay because here maximum heat is going to get onto the work so the electrode having the negative terminal so the deposition rate from the electrode is minimum okay option c the less heating at the work no we are get the maximum heat at the work only so this is also not correct and option d smaller weld pool no because we are having the maximum heat on the workpiece so weld pool is also bigger okay so definitely uh, what is the correct option it is lesser deposition rate okay in case of say we already discussed the mig welding we are providing uh, there is a wire wire electrode that is going to uh, consume during the process so definitely what we are intentionally doing there we are keeping that uh, electrode as a positive uh, so that what happen the wire can melt easily we will get the maximum deposition rate from that wire onto the workpiece okay so <clears throat> less penetration no we are getting maximum penetration in straight polarity that that is electrode negative we are having maximum heat at the work we are having the bigger weld pool but the deposition rate is lesser okay so that is the thing in case of reverse polarity we are getting the less penetration we are getting the less heating of the work we are getting the uh, bigger weld pools isn't it sorry we are getting the smaller weld pool and of course the deposition rate is very high as the electrode also get consuming we are getting the maximum deposition rate from the electrode so this is the main difference in straight polarity and reverse polarity we already discussed next question the electrodes used in the arc welding are coated this is not expected to what is given the electrodes used in the welding arc the electrodes used in the arc welding are arc welding are see here what is the question the electrodes used in the arc welding are coated this is not expected to options are provide protective atmosphere to the weld stabilize the arc add the alloying element and prevent the electrode from contamination see we have seen this uh, in the video of electrodes in the arc welding that there are two types of electrode one is consumable another is non consumable in consumable electrodes we are having we are providing the coatings and we have seen what are the advantages of that coating so what these coatings are doing say so, so it is deoxidizing the melt it is forming a slag or a weld pool then it can absorb the various gases okay in addition to that they are stabilizing the arc also they are giving some additional alloying element into the weld we have seen this so yes provide the protective shielding or protective atmosphere to the weld by the shielding stabilizes the arc add the alloying elements c this is the option d prevent the electrode from the contamination see that is a question of electrode 
that how you are uh, uh, using it so it is the making problem of electrode it is not the issue of the coating over it okay so basically the coatings are added on to the electrodes to get these advantages yes or no so prevent the electrode from contamination it is not the advantages of the coating provided on the electrode okay so this all we are doing for the weld weld our weld pool okay not for the electrode please remember this so this is not expected from the coating please remember so option d is correct answer preheating before welding is done to see what is question on preheating preheating before welding is done to so options are make steel soft make steel soft option b burn away oil grease etc from the plate option c prevent cold cracks prevent plate distortions see so <clears throat> preheating and post heating that we are carrying out in the welding process so actually whenever there are the hot cracks okay or the cold cracks are present into the weld so it is uh, get <clears throat> minimize or uh, to have the remedy for that is that actually post heating of the weld okay so here actually the preheating i already uh, mentioned there that it is basically used for increasing the initial temperature conditions of the plate when you are going for a welding of a very high temperature uh, material say for example the cast irons so cast irons the melting point is uh, very huge around 16 more than 1600 degree centigrade so to weld such a materials what we are doing we are using this preheating technique but preheating technique basically also do the very uh, basic function is that so because of the preheating whatever the grease or oils or, or dust which are present on the plates that get clean okay so it will burn away oil grease etc from the plate that is more correct when we talk about the preheating okay so actually this uh, preventing cold cracks and preventing the place distortion for that we are uh, post heating the weld okay to minimize that distortion or minimize that uh, cold cracks into the weld so preheating basically done for burn away the oil grises etc from the plates this thing we have discussed in the defects in welding where cause and remedies are discussed two plates of same metal having equal thickness are butt welded with the electric arc when the plate thickness changes welding is achieved by so two plates again in arc uh, arc welding in butt position they are welding now what they are saying that when the plate thickness changes the welding is achieved by the plate thickness is changed here so options are by adjusting the current second option by adjusting the duration of current by changing the electrode sides or by changing the electrode coating so so please remember that in arc welding the very important controlling parameter is only the current see the current is changes with the thickness if thickness is goes on increasing we have to increase the current conditions in arc welding so which option is correct so adjusting the current that is the correct option 
okay so let us have the next question so which one of the following welding processes does not use the consumable electrode the options are gas metal arc welding gas tungsten arc welding then submerged arc welding and none of the above so we know very well so in tig welding where the tungsten is used as the non consumable electrode remaining other processes we are using the consumable electrode that is gas metal arc welding it nothing but the mig this is the tig tungsten inert gas welding or gas tungsten arc welding this is submerged arc welding so in this we are using the consumable electrode but in tungsten inert gas welding we are using the non consumable electrode which is the tungsten electrode okay next question in oxyacetylene gas welding the temperature of the inner cone of the flame is around okay so the options are 35 100 degree centigrade then 3200 degree centigrade 2900 degree centigrade and 2550 degree centigrade so we have seen all the temperatures average temperatures maximum temperatures of uh, the gas welding in that in every flame we have seen the temperature say for neutral flame the maximum temperature is 3260 degree centigrade for oxyacetylene flame or oxidizing flame it is uh, around 3400 degree centigrade and for the carburizing flame it is 3040 degree centigrade so if you take the of course maximum temperature is always at the interface of the inner cone and outer cone so if this is the inner cone of the flame and this is the outer cone of the flame so at the interface we are having the maximum temperature so in an average we can say for the oxyacetylene gas welding the average temperature at the inner cone of the flame flame is 30 200 degree centigrade okay next question the strength of braced joint they are asking for the strength of braced joint number a decreases with increase in gap between the two joining surfaces increases with increase the gap between two surfaces decreases up to certain gap between two joining surfaces and beyond it increases and option d increases up to certain gap and beyond beyond that it decreases okay so this is the question what strength of braced joint so we discussed in the soldering and brazing and we also talk about the strength of the braced joint how the graph is like this is it it so the strength versus this gap between the two joining surfaces so initially what happen as the gap is going to increase so filler material will reach to the a maximum portion into the joint that is wettability is going to increase and because of increasing wettability surface aligning tendency also going to increase so a strength of the joint ultimately goes on increases so it first of as the gap increases the wettability and the surface aligning goes on increases that why the strength is also goes on increasing and up to certain gap you know we have seen the optimum gap is from 0.025 mm to 0.075 mm and beyond that now the entire load is getting transported onto the filler material that's why load that's why the strength of this braced joint goes on decreasing so i hope this is the d is the correct option the strength increases up to a certain gap between the two work pieces beyond which it is goes on decreasing 
So D is the correct answer. Next question. Which of the following is a solid state welding process? We already discussed uh, the friction welding is a solid state welding process. So options are TIG welding, resistance spot welding, submerged arc welding and friction welding. Of course, GTAW is arc welding, resistance spot welding is a fusion welding process with the pressure. SAW as a, is again the arc welding. So friction welding is the solid state welding process. Okay, so where one part is stationary it is aligned with the one rotary part having the rpm around 1500 and we are taking this non-stationary part onto the rotating part so that the first of all rubbing action will cause that will clean out the surface and then we are applying the pressure so the because of the friction the two pieces are reached up to the melting point and we are getting the joint this is a friction welding that is solid state welding process. So next pro question is which one of the following welding processes uses non-consumable electrode again this is a repeated question in 2011. So of course TIG welding we know that so go ahead. The major difficulty during the welding of the aluminium is due to its this is a question in ME 2014. So what is the question? The major difficulty during welding of the aluminium is due to its option A, high tendency of oxidation, option B, high thermal conductivity, option C, low melting point and option D, low density. So the thing is that very importantly many times we discuss that the aluminium and magnesium these are highly reactive materials. And if you go for welding these processes without any proper shielding over that, then definitely the, the molten material gets react with the oxides or oxygen and form the oxides. Okay, so oxidation is the big tendency of the highly reactive materials that is for aluminum and magnesium and that is the main difficulty in during the welding of the aluminum. Okay, so the correct answer is what? The high tendency of oxidation. The high tendency of oxidation is main difficulty for having a welding of aluminium. Okay. So next question. In solid state welding, the contamination layer between the surfaces to be welded are removed by, I repeat question. In solid state welding, the contamination layer between the surfaces to be welded are removed by options are by alcohol, by plastic deformation, by water jet and by sandblasting. So we already discussed in the solid state welding process that so if you look at the any uh, welding process other than the solid welding so we need the proper cleaning of the plates where that the joint is going to produce so that no any dust or no any uh, uh, droplets of say grease or oils should be there or that get added into the weld and contaminate our weld so that's why we are using the alcohol cleaning we are using the uh, wire brushes for the cleaning okay so cleaning is a must before doing the welding operation but as in solid state welding process what happened the friction in the initial uh, the rubbing of the two work pieces they will squeeze out the layer contaminated layer or the corrosive layer which is present on to the two joining faces it will get removed out squeezed out by the rubbing action that is by the plastic deformation so no any need of cleaning of the work pieces before you are going for the friction welding technique that is solid state welding technique the impurities or contamination layer will uh, removed in the rubbing action by the plastic deformation so no any additional cleaning is required please remember this so what is the correct answer yes in solid state welding the contamination layer between the surfaces to be welded are removed by 
simply plastic deformation by water jet by sand blasting by alcohol cleaning it is for the other welding processes or by using the wire brushes it can be done but solid state welding they were simply removed by the plastic deformation very important please remember next question within the heat affected zone in a fusion welding process the work material undergoes so they are asking the uh, things about the hz that is heat affected zone okay so we already discussed about this heat affected affected zone is what because of the huge he heating huge heat uh, of the welding so the adjacent part of the uh, plate near to that weld also get affected by this uh, heat and what actually happened in that area they are not going this area not going to melt but because of this tremendous heat some metallurgical properties are definitely going to hamper by this heat and that's why that region is known as the heat affected zone so heat affected zone is melting no weld area actually melting heat affected zone is not melting but because of that heat of welding there are certain changes we can observe in the metallurgical properties of the uh, material so let us see the options number a microstructure changes but does not melt yes this is very correct i hope let us see next option neither melting nor microstructural change c both melting and microstructural changes after solidification and option d melting and retains the original microstructure after solidification so there is no any question of melting because that part is not going to melt but of course the microstructure changes are there so this a option is very correct that is microstructural changes but does not melt so this is uh, happening within the heat affected zone in fusion welding okay so go for next question <clears throat> again the pi 90 question to uh, 1990 uh, it is on the strength of the brace joint with increasing the joint thickness the tensile strength of the brace joint okay joint thickness that is increasing in the strength so what happened about the strength they are asking option a continuously decreases no option b first decrease and then increase no continuously increase no first increase and then decrease yes, strength of the brace joint is first increase and this decrease we see in this okay next question uh, it is match the pair type question here is a welding process welding processes and here is the heat source heat source so a thermit welding B projection welding so see here the next question we are having for one mark that is match the pair at one column we are having the welding process and other column we are having the heat sources so match the pair thermit welding is a chemical welding process so heat is obtained by this exothermic chemical reaction say so definitely this is the thermit welding this is the heat source then for projection welding it is nothing but the extension of spot welding which is the category of resistance welding and here for the heating of the joint we are using the resistance yes or no so this is match with the overmax resistance projection welding mig welding it's definitely the arc welding it is c and friction welding it is a solid state welding process where because of friction we are getting the temperature at the interface of the two plates that is a mechanical work friction welding okay so very simple process and the heat source the next question is <clears throat> in resistance seam welding the electrode is in the form of c in resistance spot welding we are having the electrode cylindrical straight cylindrical electrode okay 
and in the seam welding we are having the electrode in the form of circular disc isn't it the seam welding is nothing but what the continuous spot welding process isn't it seam welding is nothing but what continuous spot welding where the thick copper electrodes are used which is circular shape of circular disc isn't it so options are cylindrical flat plate coil of wire and circular disc so in resistance seam welding the electrode is in the form of thick circular disc okay so circular disc is the correct answer in a next question in a linear arc welding process the heat per unit length is inversely proportional to the so in what is the question in linear arc welding process the heat per unit length the heat per unit length we know this is the heat input net heat input in the arc welding that is this power is equal to or this h net is equal to this power divided by the velocity yes or no that is vi divided by v we know this h net it is in joule per millimeter isn't it so they are asking in linear arc welding process the heat per unit length is inversely proportional to the option a welding current option b welding voltage option c the welding speed and option d duty cycle duty cycle of power source so we are having the formula here this net heat input in this arc welding is actually proportional to the voltage proportional to the current but it is inversely proportional to the velocity you can see here. isn't it so c is the correct choice next welding which one of the following joining processes are autogenous what is the question which one of the following processes are autogenous number 1 diffusion welding so these are the process given second process given as electro slag welding option 3 tig welding not these are not the option these are the processes given and friction welding and they are asking autogenous autogenous so option a 1 and 4 option b 2 and 3 option c 2 and 4 and option d 1 and 3 so dear students what is mean by autogenous welding so in the autogenous welding where we are not requiring any kind of filler rod or fluxes please remember autogenous welding means we are not require any kind of additional supply of molten metal from the filler rod so see in diffusion welding we are not using actually the any filler rod electro slag welding yes we are using tig welding we can use even in friction welding at the time of joining we are not providing any kind of filler material so actually diffusion welding and friction welding are the autogenous welding processes diffusion welding and friction welding 1 and 4 so 1 and 4 this option a is correct that is these are diffusion welding and friction welding are the autogenous welding processes we are not supplying any kind of filler rod or additional material from the filler rod okay so a is the correct answer next question in a gas tungsten arc welding process the material coated on pure tungsten electrode 
टू एनहांस इट्स करंट कैरिंग कैपेसिटी इज ऑप्शन ए टाइटेनियम बी मैंगनीज सी रेडियम एंड डी थोरियम सो सी इन टीक वेल्डिंग वी आर यूजिंग द नॉन कंज्यूमेबल इलेक्ट्रोड विच इज मेड अप ऑफ टंगस्टन which is less expensive and also it is having the less current carrying capacity and to increase the current carrying capacity of this electrode that is tungsten electrode uh, i already mentioned in the tig welding that around 1 to 2% of thorium is get added into that electrode to increase the current capacity please remember so what is the correct answer here this so yes option d thorium is given so thorium is basically used to increase the current capacity of this tungsten electrode in tig welding process so option d is correct under optimal conditions of the process temperatures experienced by the copper piece in the fusion welding comma brazing and soldering are such a that i will write here under optimal conditions of the process temperatures experienced by the copper piece in fusion welding brazing and soldering are such that so option a is given t welding greater than t soldering greater than t brazing t soldering greater than t welding greater than t brazing option c t brazing greater than t welding greater than t soldering and option d t welding greater than t brazing greater than t soldering So this is AME 2016 question for one mark. So understand the question. Under optimal conditions of the processes, the temperatures experienced by a copper piece, the temperature experienced by the copper piece in fusion welding, brazing, and soldering are such that. So here, in different processes, the temperature experienced by this. uh copper is given as c temperature in welding is greater than temperature in soldering greater than temperature in brazing but we know that for the copper the temperature in welding is greater than temperature in that of brazing and which is greater than the temperature in the soldering so very easy this is d is the correct option okay so these are the uh, one one mark questions uh, we have discussed for this welding topic okay thank you